Jamila, why are the Iowa caucuses so important to the U.S. presidential race? Well, this is where all of the show ponies get dressed up and prettied up and pranced before America, well, a tiny little slice of America, a very undiverse slice of America, economically, racially, to say, this is who I am, this is what I'm putting forth, this is why I should be your president. And um, this is really the, the, the race to the White House starts here. But are they a determining factor as the process continues on in the different uh, primaries? This year is amazingly crazy, for lack of a better term. Um, the package we just saw did a wonderful job of, of summarizing that candidates such as John Kasich, the governor of Ohio, um, you know, candidates who have long storied political histories and experience are getting pushed aside for, I don't know, someone who used to host a reality television show, um, a, a Canadian person who, born in Canada, who's an American citizen, who there's still the jury is out whether or not he's actually able to hold the office, office of the presidency. This is just, uh, this is the Wild West come to 2016. How are they different than a primary? The caucuses are different than a primary because the caucuses do not actually, uh, whoever wins the caucus doesn't necessarily represent the party. The primary picks the individual who will represent the party. Um, four years ago, we saw that uh, former senator of Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum, came out from nowhere and won uh, the caucuses, of course, his candidacy went nowhere, and we know that Mitt Romney wound up uh, representing the GOP in terms of who would be going against uh, then incumbent president, still incumbent president Barack Obama. All righty. So what about technology playing into, into the caucuses? Um, many people are, you know, on their smartphones uh, talking about, you know, who they like, who they don't like, uh, taking parts in surveys. Is it hard for these polls to keep up with technology? Well, they, it is hard for the polls to keep up with technology because depending on who said what and when, and what goes viral, you see a spike in this candidate versus that one. Um, Jeb Bush, who, you know, it, it's his time in his mind. Uh, he really hasn't made any big splash, even though his candidacy um, really is a good example of how to do a grassroots campaign, uh, reaching out to older voters. Uh, they're still doing dialing to, to reach out to people who might not have the smartphones and are reading the most recent Facebook updates from the candidates. I guess um, what I'm saying, Jamila, like Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton may enter tomorrow with the lead. Uh, you know, it could be Bernie Sanders over mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton. We just don't know. It's neck and neck there. Um, but is it hard to predict because of technology at this point? It absolutely is hard to predict. It, 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 it's along the lines of sitting and watching a sporting match. Who scores last is who gets that big rush, that big wave. Everyone goes, yay, Bernie did this. Oh, wait, Hillary retorted with that. Um, Donald Trump was just on the morning shows. He said something outrageous, and you see a big spike mm -hmm. in, in interest around him. But again, we are trying to elect the leader of the free world. Um, quick sound bites and viral sound bites do not a president make. And I think because of those quick sound bites and those viral hits, you see ra radical shifts in who is getting talked about. And I would argue that's not best for this political process. It's just what we've got. All righty, Jamila Bay, thank you. Always good to see you. Thank you.